Let's talk about the two biggest storylines of the week. Was Hendrick Motorsports cheating and will they get fined on Wednesday? And will Danny Hamlin get penalized for what he said on his podcast, Actions Detrimental, this week? So first, let's get into what Hendrick Motorsports did, or what they're at least accused of doing, which is modifying a single source supplied part, that being the louvers in the hood. And that's the vent area that you see, not the French art museum. I don't think there's a lot of crossover between that audience and this audience, but you never know. So did they modify those parts? We know that you're not allowed to modify a single source supplied part. We saw that happen with RFK last year and Brad Keselowski. You have the 100 point fine, $100,000 penalty. Well, Hendrick Motorsports had the lures confiscated off all four cars. So some simple math tells you that that could possibly be a $400,000 fine for Hendrick Motorsports and a 400 point fine across the team, 100 obviously for each car. So what exactly happened? Well, Friday they went out for that 50 minute practice to test out the new short track aero package and NASCAR's inspectors didn't like what they saw with the louvers before practice. Still let the cars go out and practice. Kyle Larson was fastest in that practice by a substantial amount and led over the 5, 10, 15, and 30 lap averages, which obviously doesn't look great. So after practice, NASCAR came out and confiscated those parts off the car. Why did they do it before practice? Well, maybe they wanted to have some internal conversations about what they saw. Maybe they wanted to be a Scott Foster like he is in the NBA and make the show all about that, make a spectacle out of something that really wasn't that spectacular. Either way, the parts got taken. They also took the parts off the Colleg 31 as well of Justin Haley. So we're going to find out on Wednesday whether that's a penalty or not. On Denny Hamlin's podcast this week, Denny mentioned that those are really important parts, super crucial parts. And listen, if I was a team owner from another manufacturer, I'd say they were super important too. It's the same way that like when a driver's leading and they're like, oh, there could be rain in the area. They're like, it's pouring right now. We got to call this race immediately. You know, it's the same way with the NFL and deflate gate. All the other teams are like, yeah, the Patriots cheated. If you're not the one cheating, you want to see somebody else get hit with a massive fine, especially if you're getting your butts kicked right now, like every other team is compared to anyone that's not a Chevy team or specifically a Hendrick Motorsports team. So what exactly do the louvers do? Well, they relieve pressure from the radiator. And essentially with the Gen 7 car, NASCAR wanted to, in their words, decouple air performance and engine performance. So before teams used to tape up the grill on the car, uh, you'd see that happen a lot before qualifying and sometimes before the race. And that would put some extra strain on the engine. Less airflow obviously means the engine's going to run a little bit warmer. And, you know, now the OEMs want their engines to last more than one race and preferably more than two races um, as well without having to go, you know, rebuild and whatnot. So the whole point of the louvers is to alleviate that pressure goes out through the vents. Obviously, um, it goes on from there. So is it an aero part? Yeah, kind of. Is it the most crucial aero part? Absolutely not. Not nearly as crucial as stacking vinyl underneath the nose of the car as the JGR cars did last year and Denny Hamlin got his win taken away at Pocono. So what will happen with Hendrick Motorsports and will they get fined? I definitely think they're going to get fined. I think it, I don't think it's going to be the hundred point, hundred thousand dollar penalty because again, it depends on how much they manufacture, modified the single source supplied parts. If they rounded the edges off, then that's not the biggest deal because teams had complained that these louvers don't fit well. And NASCAR told them don't modify it, work with the supplier to correct that issue. And if Hendrick Motorsports instead tried to modify it themselves to get it to fit correctly, that's obviously not allowed. Is that a performance advantage? I would argue no. Some people may argue yes. So it depends on what exactly they did. If they just modified it to make it fit better around the hood or whatever the housing is that it mounts to, that's not that big of an issue. If they were modifying it to either increase downforce or increase airflow, then yeah, that's a bigger issue. And that should get $100,000 and 100 points. I think the bigger issue is here, part of that RFK fine that didn't end up coming to fruition because Brad didn't make the playoffs was the fact that if he did make the playoffs, that was a 10 point reduction in playoff points. If that happens to Hendrick Motorsports, that essentially eliminates William Byron's wins so far this year. So those 10 bonus points he has for winning those two races, nullified at this point. Obviously he has uh, stage points, he can take those. Sets Kyle Larson back, he won't be a full 10 points negative and playoff points, but you know, he's going to lose some and Alex Bowman and obviously Chase Elliott, if he makes the playoffs will also be at a disadvantage. So I think they're going to get hit with a fine. I'm not sure if it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 50 points per car and $50,000 per car. Either way, we're all going to find out on Wednesday 
And depending on what happens, I mean, Rick Hendricks got enough money to write this check anyways, but it could really shape up the points for the rest of the season because Alex Bowman's leading the points right now. And there's a chance by, tomorrow, by Wednesday night, he's not leading those points anymore. So find out then. Well, it took all of six episodes for Denny Hamlin to land himself in hot water with NASCAR on his new podcast, Actions Detrimental. Again, still a bit difficult to say. So, Denny Hamlin said that he intentionally wrecked Ross Chastain on the last lap at Phoenix. Obviously, those two have a long history together. Ross bullied Denny all of last year, and Denny never repaid him. Uh, so, when Denny got the chance on Sunday at Phoenix, he just washed up the track, took Ross into the wall with him, and then Ross was driving down the backstretch trying to brake check Denny the entire time like he's Max Verstappen at Jeddah in 2021. And then Denny gets down to turn three and tries to wreck him. And he even admits on the podcast that it's really hard to wreck him, especially when Ross knows that you're trying to do that. So Denny said, quote, it wasn't a mistake. It was a mistake. I let go of the wheel. I said, I'm taking him with me, unquote. Um, so yeah, basically just straight up admitted that he wrecked Ross Chastain. So the question is, will NASCAR penalize him for admitting that he intentionally wrecked somebody? Well, Alton Sawyer was, Alton Sawyer, Alton Sawyer, however you want to pronounce that, was on Sirius XM on Tuesday and said that they had heard the remarks and they would take a look at it. There isn't really a precedent necessarily for this, but at the same time, NASCAR has penalized drivers for admitting that they intentionally brought out a caution, Bubba Wallace, perfect example. And last year at Texas, NASCAR did penalize William Byron post-race for intentionally wrecking Denny Hamlin under the yellow flag. That penalty was ultimately rescinded. But you can hear William Byron gas up under caution and run into the 11. It was very obvious what he was doing. However, nobody's really ever just come out and been like, yeah, I straight up wrecked the guy. Even Matt Kenseth, who straight up wrecked Joey Logano, didn't say that. He cut a tire down. And Denny, instead of being like, yeah, I cut a tire down or I lost it or I just washed up the track and unfortunately the one got caught, was like, yeah, I wrecked him. So I hope NASCAR doesn't penalize him. Obviously, there is the opportunity for them to set a precedent now and they might actually take this opportunity to do that. But I hope they don't, because the sport desperately needs podcasts like Denny's, like Door Bumper Clear, where you have people within the industry speaking candidly about what's happening in the sport, whether it's intentionally wrecking somebody, what's happening on the track, how the package is performing, the business side of things, and what could make a racing better. The sport needs all of that because they don't get it from their two biggest broadcast partners in Fox and NBC. They're being paid to promote NASCAR. They're not going to say anything that's ever even remotely critical of NASCAR unless you count Mike Joy's, that was a quick caution this past weekend, as something that would be critical. And that's literally the closest they'll ever get to being critical. So will Denny Hamlin get penalized? Potentially. I hope not, but I think NASCAR could use this to set somewhat of a precedent, uh, unfortunately, for Denny. And he doesn't exactly have a history of intentionally wrecking guys. I know Chase Elliott fans are trying to come through the screen right now and fight me over that, but he didn't intentionally wreck Chase at Martinsville. It was just more of a racing incident. So hopefully he doesn't get a penalty. I understand if NASCAR does give him a penalty, but at the same time, the sport needs more of what Denny Hamlin's doing with that podcast. Uh, and hopefully the sport is smart enough to realize that. I think the new regime has done a good job of embracing um, different content created uh, by people within the industry. So will Denny Hamlin get penalized? Possibly. So let me know what you think. Do you think Hendrick Motorsports deserves a penalty? Do you think Denny Hamlin deserves a penalty? And just leave it in the comments and let me know. And I'll probably respond because who doesn't love a little discourse? Either way, follow me on Twitter at Break Hard Blog, Instagram Break Hard Blog, and TikTok at Break Hard. 